Welcome uh, to the how-to webinar on setting up and using electronic client feedback systems for HIV programs. This is part of a five-part webinar series on how to take HIV services online, supported by PEPFAR and USAID. Today, we are on our fourth webinar, and we have the final webinar scheduled September 24th on online marketing for HIV services. I'll send the registration link uh, to that webinar in the chat, and I'll also share the recording for the first three webinars in this chat. So if you're interested in those, go ahead and uh, click those links, open them on your computer, uh, and or just copy them so that you're able to see them later. Because once the webinar is ended, uh, you won't be able to see the content in the chat. So I've, I've gone ahead and sent those. We'll go to the next slide. So a bit of an introduction, my name is Ben Eveslaj. I'm a technical advisor for online HIV services at FHI 360. I support our, go our global and bilateral HIV programs, mainly funded by USAID and PEPFAR to use online and virtual platforms to support HIV outreach, referrals, clinic reporting, case management and collecting and using client feedback. So let's start with some logistics. So as attendees, you, you should be muted uh, as a default. Other, other panelists uh, can stay muted unless they're speaking. Please use a Q&A feature to ask questions anytime and avoid using the chat, uh, just because the Q&A will allow us to track all your questions, provide responses for each one. And if we can't during the webinar, we can also answer your questions uh, by email we'll send out after the webinar. You can send other messages or notices in the comments uh, in the chat section. And make sure to select to all panelists and attendees. And during this webinar, we'll use some polls. So be prepared to click or touch options on your screen to respond to those polls. So we'll uh, go to the next slide and we'll test out our first poll. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Yep. And see if we can open up that first poll. All right, great. So uh, just very quickly, understanding who's on the call, which type of organization uh, do you represent? You can mention the donor agency and HIV programs such as field or HD staff, government or ministry staff, community organization, health worker, frontline worker. Go ahead and select your response now. And Pervy, why don't you go ahead and just reveal the responses and see what we have. Great, as suspected, a lot of HIV program staff has some from a donor agency um, and a good mix of others. So perfect, we'll, go, uh, we'll close this poll and we'll go to the next slide. All right. I'm so, all right. So if, if you're if you're on the poll, go ahead and, and hit close and probably go on to the next slide. So today we have um, this webinar scheduled for an hour and a half. Uh, we'll start with reviewing the survey tool that has been used as part of Linkages and Epic's electronic client feedback system, and we'll pretest it ourselves. And then we're going to hear from the field using a fishbowl activity. We have six country representatives on this call who will be able to share their experience in that activity. And you'll learn uh, in a more in-depth way about the challenges and lessons learned from using this approach. And then we'll go back and we'll view how data can be collected using this link system. It's called link. Uh, and, then, and then we'll go into how data is analyzed and used. And then we'll discuss some tips about how it can be rolled out. And during that fishbowl activity, we'll have the Q&A open and you can use that to ask questions to any program. Uh, and they, after they open up the fishbowl, they'll be able to respond to the audience's questions as well. So go to the next slide. All right, let's start with the survey tool and we're gonna start with a poll. So Pervy will go to the next slide and open up that poll. So we're gonna be asking, what are you most interested to measure? So today, just, uh, We'll be, when the poll is open, uh, you'll be responding on a number of different options of what you're interested to measure as it relates to client feedback. 
in terms of your own HV program or, or yourself. So let's go ahead and when it pulls open, uh, select the one item that you're most interested to measure. Of course, you can, you'd like, you might like to select many, but let's just select the one that you're most interested to measure. So the options are uh, health provider malpractice, stock out of drug, drugs or supplies, client experience of stigma or discrimination, adverse events or negative experiences related to index testing, client suggestions for quality improvement or gender-based or intimate partner violence uh, that might occur in, in the clinical setting. So go ahead and click the one that you're most interested in just so we can get a sense of what you're interested in. All right, make your selection and Pervy, why don't you go ahead and uh, close the poll and review and present the results. Okay, great. So it looks like uh, most interested in client suggestions for quality improvement. Those are typically open response and we'll show how that has been done in the link survey tool. And then also very popular client experience of stigma or discrimination. So that is, that's great. Uh, others are interested in some other items as well. And you'll be able to see when we pretest the link tool if this will be right for you. So let's go ahead to the next slide and close this poll and Pervy will go to the next slide. Great. So this uh, is the survey tool. Let's get hands on with it. You can test the link standard survey now and I'll send this link in the chat. So this will be an activity for us to do on our own. And please do select, click the link that I've sent in the chat, open it up. This is for all panelists attendees to be able to do. Go ahead and click the link, open it up in your browser. And for this test, please select a community clinic under question two. We'll want to have our responses focused under community clinics so that it'll be easiest for, an, for us to analyze the data together later. Also, as you complete the survey, consider the last time you went to a real health clinic. So it's best to base your responses on a real experience and enter your rating, feedback, and even a client complaint based on that clinic experience. So your responses are, of course, anonymous here. Uh, but we will be reviewing your aggregate and individual feedback and complaints later in this webinar as a demonstration on how to use data collected using the system, but your name will not be linked to your feedback. So just keep that in mind. Go ahead and open, oh, open that link and we'll complete the survey together. I'm going to go ahead and open it on my side and I'm going to do a screen share so I can show you from my side the steps that I'm going through to do this. All right. I'm sharing my screen. Please go ahead and do this on your own as your inputs are required for us to be able to use the data analysis on the back end. We'll need some, some survey responses to do that. And use a real clinic experience uh, as a basis for your feedback maybe the last time you went to a clinic. So this is the welcome page and you have an option to select. You can go ahead and, and complete on your own. I'm just gonna narrate my own doing of the survey. Select who is completing the form and for which type of service, community clinic. We'll select the name of the clinic and these are all fake clinics, obviously and the service that you're going to provide feedback for. You can only select one service, and if you want to repeat for a different service, you can do that. How likely is it that you would recommend the service to a friend or colleague? Zero to 10. Just for your reference, a zero to six is considered a detractor, someone that would likely not recommend and may say negative things about the facility. Seven and eight are considered passives, and nine and 10 are considered promoters people that will positively impact the on or promotion of that clinic based on their experience. So you can give your rating based on that. And if you respond to zero to six, uh, you might have something to recommend to the facility for quality improvement, seven or eight, may mean you don't have uh, specific feedback. Nine and 10 is 
you might have something that you really liked and you might be asked to explain what that item was that you liked. And then what most impacted your score above? Only one item can be selected here, or you can put in other. And a follow-up question, how likely is it that you would return to the same service for your future sexual health or HIV service needs? Likely, not likely, or not sure. Hit the next. Open feedback. Explain one thing you like the most. And then some demographic questions. Just putting in random responses here. Okay, so that's the, that's the end of my survey. If you were to select a low score on this on the satisfaction question then it might present you the option to submit a client complaint. You can go ahead and fill out that client complaint and, and then it'll also conclude after that client complaint. So please go ahead, continue taking the survey. Uh, I will move ahead with, the, with a review of this tool. So I'm gonna ask Kirby to go back and screen share from her side the PowerPoint. Great, and we'll go to the slide um, on that has the three different phone screens on it. Yeah, next slide. Great, thank you. So there's three parts of the survey, as you've seen. There's the client satisfaction scores. It includes three multiple choice questions for clients to provide their feedback on the service they received. The first measure is the client's likelihood to promote the service to others using this framework called the net promoter score. And that is at scoring from zero to 10. This is an industry standard question and it's been used across many different uh, sectors from health to uh, you know, walk-in uh, uh, businesses on the, on the side of the street. There's many different, uh, different types of businesses that have, or, or, or services that have used this net promoter framework. It's the most popular framework for client feedback rating. The second, it allows the client to identify the leading factor that impacted their score, which was that multiple choice question. And the third measures the client's likelihood to return to the same service in the future. And the reason why we have the net promoter score and the likelihood to return is important because many HIV programs and clinics are more focused on whether the client returns for service than whether if they promote to their peers and promote a uh, positive uh, word of mouth uh, or brand for the clinic, but they're both included here. The second is open feedback and demographics. So there's a direct question for clients who provide a low score or those that provide a high score on that NPS question. As you see, it said, seems you were happy with the services, what's one thing you liked most, or explain one thing you liked. And if they had provided a low score, it asks, seems you're unhappy with the services, can you explain one thing that can be improved? So it's very directed, and it doesn't ask for information from clients unless, unless they're estimated to have uh, feedback. So for instance, the positive attribute is not really asked if they gave a low rating. And then there are three questions on demographics at the end of that second part. They're all optional and they're used to be able to know if certain experiences are more pre prevalent among certain populations. And the last part is a client complaint form. And this allows a client to report a more detailed account of a negative experience related to their service access. It's a five question form that collects important details useful 
to identify how quality improvement or corrective action should be directed. Let's go to the next slide. So here we have a couple of unique aspects of this survey, and this is just providing some context to individuals or HED programs that are interested to use it so they know why the survey was designed a certain way. So first, it is very short. SurveyMonkey estimates that it takes people five minutes to complete this on average. However, for the majority of clients, unless they submit a client complaint, the survey is a lot shorter. The standard survey can have 10 questions and as low as six questions, depending on how it's, how it's formatted. It's also tailored to clients, as you saw, that clients that provided a high rating are asked specifically one open response of what they liked. And if they had a low rating, to explain what they did not like. And it's very directed in that way. There's also multiple data collection methods that can be used with the survey. For instance, the survey can be administered by someone else or taken by a client themselves. And because it's online, it can be sent directly to clients to complete on their own phone through a link. In another thing you might notice on this survey is that it attributes the feedback to a specific division within the clinic or service that is delivering the services. So there's a set of questions at the beginning of the survey to help the client specify the exact facility and service that they accessed and will provide feedback on. And if there's a long list of facilities to choose from, we typically break this up by asking first, what district did you receive services or what type of facility, just so that they can select from a shorter list of, of, of providers. Then we ask about the specific health service that they accessed. And this was a question around HIV testing, or PrEP, or ART. So this question is not to understand service uptake of those, serv of those different health services, but rather to be able to attribute clients feedback to the right team or staff within that facility who delivers that service. So that question is most useful for large facilities, for instance, where the STI services are offered by a different team or location in the clinic than the ART services. So in that case, if a client ac accesses multiple services within their one visit, they would just need to repeat the survey for that other service. It also allows the results, the feedback to be attributed to certain populations. As you saw, some of those optional questions about population type, gender, and age, programs can see if certain experiences are more common among certain populations, such as if low scorers with staff friendliness as the impacting factor might be more common among key populations. So that, that might indicate issues of stigma towards key populations. The client complaint form is also based on PEPFAR's recommended uh, form that was sent out to implementing partners. And it also helps define the negative experience and to categorize if this experience was related to index testing, meaning offering the clients the option to refer their partners for testing if they had already been diagnosed HIV positive. As you might have noticed, this survey also uses emojis. And you may ask why. Well, it's relatable for most clients to use emojis, and sometimes it feels more interesting to take a survey with emojis than plain text. And it might be helpful to demonstrate or convey the meaning of the response. Also, emojis appear faster with less loading time than images. So that's another reason why emojis are useful. And from you know, a program perspective, a back-end perspective, from my own personal perspective, emojis were very useful for data analysis especially when programs have a survey in a local language and TA providers can remember the response options by the emojis that are presented and can be easier to analyze the data on the back end without knowing the language. Because when you're in, for instance, SurveyMonkey, which is what we have been using, the analysis features are gonna present the survey and the responses in the original language. So those, those emojis are useful for that purpose. Another item to note is that this link um, electronic client feedback tool and system was designed to be owned by an HD program or health program and not necessarily owned entirely by clinics themselves. So this is important to note, um, particularly useful for donor funded HIV programs that are supporting many clinics on quality improvement or a government uh, health system or HIV program, they could also use this in that same way. Uh, the reason why it's not really designed for 
clinics themselves. It's just because that client feedback form might be collecting information on experiences of violence in clinic or adverse events um, or provider misconduct that may uh, that the client may not want to share with that provider directly or with that clinic directly, but with a higher authority that is responsible to support that clinic on quality improvement. So we do have this framed in a way that is useful for a sort of third party above the clinic level that can receive some of these client complaints and direct quality improvement. You can adapt this and, and communicate clearly to the client if, for instance, this is administered directly by a clinic themselves and they have access to the full data. It would just need to be clearly uh, mentioned to the client as they provide the feedback on the form. And lastly, we use SurveyMonkey uh, for our surveys just because it's been easier for data analysis and you'll see some of the functions in a few moments after the fishbowl, but this survey can be adapted to other software. Question Pro, uh, ODK, several others uh, are likely to be able to use this and the SIP logic and data analysis functions that you, uh, that you, can, that you should use for this survey. All right, we'll go to the next slide. All right, in a few moments, we'll start a fishbowl activity. And this activity, fish, uh, six people, or fish, will pretend that they are merely having a private conversation with each other and speaking honestly about the good, bad, the ugly about implementing electronic client feedback systems. And you, the participant, have the benefit of listening into their conversation. It's like you're looking, to, looking into a fishbowl and the fish are unaware that you can see them and hear them. So our six fish bring some diverse experience implementing these approaches. The fishbowl format is meant to support your unfiltered learning about the reality and planning uh, and implementing of these approaches. So let me introduce each of our fish. Next slide. Steve Wignall uh, is a project director for the Linkages Project in Cambodia, which has supported the national government to implement an electronic client feedback system using tablets at eight public ART sites since 2018. They've collected nearly 9,000 client feedback surveys and over 300 provider feedback surveys and are planning expansion of the system to cover all 67 public ART sites in Cambodia. Uh, next slide. Fan uh, is, is, from Thailand is a senior technical officer for quality assurance under the linkages project in Thailand. And she supports 12 CBOs, community-based organizations to use a client feedback system on SurveyMonkey. They have collected over 12,000 surveys to date. Next. Kiran is the technical advisor for SBC, Social Behavior Change, for the Linkages Project in Nepal and has overseen the implementation of electron electronic client feedback systems using SMS, uh, interactive voice response, as well as SurveyMonkey. They recently switched to the new uh, survey format that we pretested today and the link feedback tool has included community clinics and city clinics and their ART sites. Next slide. Lewis is a senior m and &E advisor for the EPIC project in Malawi. He was involved in rolling out the first iteration of Link in 2017 using SMS-based surveys, later moving to SurveyMonkey in 2018, and now currently relaunching to the Link, new Link survey format and covering over 100 facilities. Next. Shanti is a consultant supporting the EPIC project in Mali to set up and use a new link survey format. They only recently started implementation, but she'll bring some perspectives on how to start up and roll out. Next slide. And we have Gift, who is a technical advisor with the Linkages project in Liberia and has overseen the implementation of Link for about a year and using the new Link survey format for the last three months. All right, we'll go to the next slide. So Fish, you have 25 minutes for the fishbowl, and Steve, you can kickstart the discussion and anyone can take it from there. If there is an awkward silence, given that this is online, it's so hard to know who should be speaking next, you can go in order of your countries from east to west. It's also shown on the bottom of the screen. So Cambodia, Thailand, Nepal, Malawi, Mali, and Liberia. When you're done, uh, personally, you can say, oh, thank you, I have no more questions uh, from my side. And I'll let you know if you're going over time and otherwise you can let the discussion or end early uh, as well. After the fishbowl, we'll open the chat to start addressing questions from all the attendees. So attendees, you can ask questions using the Q&A feature 
and avoid using the normal chat. So fishes, are you ready? Okay, time to channel your interacting skills and pretend we are all not here. You can turn on your mics and turn on your cameras. And Steve, feel free to ask the group or an individual about their approach, how they did it, lessons, future plans, whatever you like. And Steve, you can take it away. All right, thank you very much, Ben. I appreciate the opportunity to talk a little bit about what we've done in Cambodia. As Ben has pointed out, uh, we have interviewed not only 9,000 clients uh, visiting our eight uh, ART clinics, but we've also interviewed providers. And I'm curious if any of our other um, team members here in the fishbowl have looked at provider responses. It was interesting to us because Cambodia has been involved in ART delivery for many years, but there were still some disturbing attitudes that we found uh, amongst providers, uh, people using double gloves, people afraid to touch patients, people having concerns about uh, HIV positive women, uh, having children, um, and being concerned about their own safety and working in the clinic. So it was all those attitudes would certainly influence uh, patient satisfaction because they're going to perceive those attitudes. So I'm curious if any of our other um, panelists uh, have had similar experience with experiences with providers. So it's been very informative and the sites have used this information to improve uh, provider attitudes and understandings. The other challenge for us in dealing with clients has been low literacy. Um, and not all of our clients have been able to answer directly on the pads and they've been assisted and we are adding an audio assist but I'd be also curious if other panelists uh, have dealt with the low literacy issue and I appreciate hearing from them. Thanks. Hi, I'm Phon from Thailand and part of the Lingso way in Thailand will start just around um, two years ago for asking the client satisfaction in various activity. The outreach um, clinic service and that include about the part of reception, counseling, laboratory, care support, and mobile HIV testing. The link survey always help us to keep the client's feedback in every activity under Link just Thailand. Moreover, Thailand link system to process of entering feedback is led by the client. This means um, those star person asking the client what they thought about the clinic or what they feel about uh, the service or the staff because after the client register under linkages project. After they finish the activity, our automatic system will send a message to client mobiles and ask them to input the client's satisfaction by themselves. So our client is independent to entering their opinion into a survey. It is good because the client can be more honest, you know, when they giving negative feedback without the worry, worrying about the community is uh, feeling to a star person directly. So Linkages Thailand use a link survey like a tools of the quality control for ensure our client feel satisfied about our HIV testing service and the outreach activity. Moreover, in in every quarter, Linkages staff always analyze all data of link survey that include the comment that make, you know, some comment that make an encouragement or some comment is have a negative complaint. Like, and so we share with our partner of each community-based organization as a routine feedback for let them know the gap that reflect from clients and all feedback help our partner plan about an activity of clinic improvement. So the link survey always help linkages staff to monitor overall image of um, 13 CBO site under linkages, linkages Thailand. That is all thing that we start to use linkages two years until now. Yeah, thank you from Thailand. 
Hi everyone, uh, this is Kiran from Nepal. Uh, Nepal has started uh, Link Feedback tool uh, as a format of uh, these uh, SMS and IVR uh, from November 2017, which was actually, uh, it was called as a uh, service quality monitoring system via SMS. So it was a, a, a mechanism uh, to conduct uh, these feedback was uh, basically from uh, SMS. And uh, so uh, we have also introduced feedback mechanism from uh, IVR also. Beneficiaries can have uh, some these uh, toll free number and they can provide some of the feedback, their feedback. So uh, this was included uh, in national community led HIV testing guideline as a community monitoring tool uh, at the same time. And uh, at the moment uh, there was an issue and uh, at that moment there were some of the issues uh, around the low response of uh, from beneficiaries and delay or uh, delay from the server uh, uh, that was actually from the rapid pro system so there was some uh, uh, these uh, technology related issues where the beneficiaries get messages uh, uh, and the messages were delayed so considering the use of uh, technology and uh, and uh, growing use of uh, these online technologies uh, linkages nepal initiated uh, link feedback tool using survey monkey uh, which was an online survey. Uh, right now, we are uh, we are receiving feedback from the beneficiaries at the uh, community, city clinics, and even ART sites in 19 districts. So, uh, Linkages has uh, recently introduced a new version of uh, link feedback tool, uh, which includes uh, adverse event monitoring uh, in the system itself. So uh, to collect feedback from the beneficiaries, we have uh, introduced some of the, these uh, pro promotional tools such as QR codes, web link, and even we have included link feedback tool in uh, our online risk assessment tool, Nerosati, uh, which is my friend in uh, English. Uh, uh, till now, in our uh, earlier version, uh, uh, we have received 686 response, uh, responses uh, within uh, 21 months. So in August, we have uh, recently launched a new version. Uh, we have received almost 150 um, feedback uh, in uh, our recent version. So feedback received from the beneficiary was really helpful to reorient staff and to, uh, to provide key population friendly services and shifting uh, in some of the, in some, uh, just wanted to highlight that in uh, some of the cases we have shifted counseling rooms uh, as per the feedback received from the beneficiary. So uh, this has been helpful to improve counseling sessions with sufficient uh, information and provide client-centered services. In recent days, we, have, uh, we are talking about these, uh, 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 even uh, these uh, clients should, uh, client should uh, access services with the uh, five Cs. So we are focusing uh, on the five Cs uh, and we are getting feedback uh, from the beneficiaries through the link feedback time tool, and this has been discussed during our uh, weekly meeting of implementing partner agencies and even uh, our uh, uh, weekly meeting of linkages Nepal project. So uh, uh, some of the lesson learned uh, from the link feedback tool was uh, providing the menu of options for the uh, promotion of uh, this link feedback tool has been uh, useful. So uh, we, are, uh, we are promoting this uh, from facility, community clinics, community outreach, and even uh, from the Mero Sati, and uh, even uh, from the QR code. So that has been helpful to get, for, get feedback, maximum number of feedback from the beneficiaries as, as per their uh, convenience. So uh, shifting, uh, uh, as a part of uh, this link uh, feedback tool, we have learned that uh, learning is uh, also important the learning and adapting. So uh, initially we used SMS, IVR, and then we shifted to the survey monkey. And so uh, uh, it was uh, uh, quite uh, difficult to get feedback in uh, SMS and IVR based system. But later uh, when we shift uh, to the survey monkey, the feedback response rate was quite high. Uh, though uh, the all individual, uh, so I, I wanted to learn, uh, our team wanted to learn uh, the, from our colleagues uh, so uh, is there any 
ways, other ways to promote uh, the uh, link feedback tool among beneficiaries so that maximum number of feedback can be received. And another is uh, the uh, responding to the issues and concerns on. on the real time. Yeah. Thank you, and this is, so um, thanks guys for getting the discussion started. Let's be more informal and ask individual members of the fishbowl about their experience. And no okay. need to present the background of your approach. Uh, let's go back to Steve. You had a question. I just want to be sure that it was addressed. Um, I think it was about it, asking providers about their experience. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, we, we interviewed 300 providers and found some actually pretty disturbing information. And I just wondered okay. if other sites actually uh, questioned providers. My other question was around low literacy and how people dealt with these ads and tablets, uh, do you use audio assist, is somebody helping, uh, et cetera. Over. Okay, let's start with the first question. We'll do one question at a time. So each person can ask your question, provide your feedback, and when we're finished providing feedback to the person my question, we can start a new question. So this is, again, informal chat. You know, your colleagues are with you here. Um, who do we have that, does anyone here have any experience on asking providers about their experience or their opinions, knowledge, attitudes? with clients. I don't know, because I only remember that Cambodia has been doing this. So none. Yeah, this is okay, Shanti just, speaking from Mali. Hey Shanti. Um, and Steve, we actually haven't, we're really starting off. We've just started um, in link implementation over the last month. And I can't speak to asking about the providers, but we do and have seen issues of literacy among some of our populations of interest as well. Um, and I would be really interested to hear what others have to say about this because it's not just applicable to Link, but also some of our other online services. So it'd be really interesting, I think, for us and valuable to hear what others have done in order to overcome that hurdle as well. Great. So, I mean, do any others here have experience with allowing clients to provide feedback, even if they have limited literacy? Hello, hello, Fish. Um, <laughs> hello. Uh, Liberia, I think um, um, we have something, an insight to share, but then it's also going to end up um, um, the question. Um, in Liberia, really also have that issue of uh, having some uh, difficulties uh, of literacy levels. So what we have actually done is to, um, uh, to use one of the healthcare workers, the basically attending healthcare worker, to actually assist with um, uh, providing um, the client feedback. But now the problem with that is um, uh, maybe the type of feedback that um, somebody may give uh, may not be really uh, comprehensive and adequate because it's like um, as if somebody is checking or maybe spying on you, or maybe um, would like to put you to somebody. You know the, the power that the healthcare workers in traditional settings hold, and uh, a client might a little bit be apprehensive to give all the important information, uh, and, and will be very careful not to, um, uh, to give everything which uh, sounds like a little bit um, uh, like uh, as if it is critical. So um, I think to respond to that question, we're saying we do use the healthcare worker to uh, do the assessment, but I think the question that I'm also asking is uh, how best can we uh, make sure that um, uh, that is properly done or what's the experience from other people, um, at least to reduce apprehension from the client. Thank you. So uh, Gift, your audio is uh a little hard to hear, a little low volume. It sounds like you said that you're allowing the attending healthcare worker to help the client complete feedback. But because it's the healthcare worker, you might be getting some, on, some, some biased responses from the clients or because the healthcare worker is actually entering the responses on behalf of the client. So another thing that they're doing in Liberia is adding tablets at community uh, partners to allow community partners to ask clients, oh, have you gone to health services in the last week? If yes, do you want to provide feedback with me? So that's offering a third entity, sort of the option to facilitate the collection of feedback or a second entity instead. 
uh, of the clinic themselves. So that's their attempt to try to get feedback uh, for clients that may not have that literacy level or a smartphone to do on their own, and also with less bias than the provider themselves. Yeah, I just, I just want to, I just want to, to a little bit uh, jump in because uh, uh, the response from Liberia mm -hmm. is kind of similar to Malawi. So it partly addresses your question, Steve, uh, about uh, the literacy part. Uh, in Malawi, we, we have both the literacy part problem as well as the access to the internet problem. So what we are doing is uh, we are using uh, some outreach workers uh, as our data collection people to help us to have access to the people that uh, no, have no access to the tablet. Obviously, they don't have personal smartphones. Uh, for them, to, accessing the internet itself is a, is a big deal. So we're using outreach workers. Uh, whenever there's an outreach clinic, outreach workers would also go to that outreach clinic. As the providers are providing services, the outreach workers would go around, randomly pick people, um, ask them if they're interested to participate in a survey. And if they said yes, then they would administer the survey. Yeah, so that way we're able to get feedback even from those who were illiterate, but also those who didn't have smartphones uh, to access uh, the Savvy Monkey uh, questionnaire. Yeah, but as the uh, gift area highlighted, the challenge is bias because uh, somebody is administering the survey to you. So you don't want to, you know, you, you try to have that social uh, kind of conformity. Uh, you don't want to go overboard. You you give desirable kind of uh, uh, results, but that's how we we're, we're able uh, to reach to the illiterate, but also to those who couldn't access, uh, uh, who have no access to the internet. Yeah, but the question that I have, I guess, is that we have never had a uh, we have never uh, actually this this set of link is the first one where we'll be giving tablets directly to the health to the health facilities. But what I would want to learn from other fishes is that how, which department do you leave the tablets uh, with? Because in Malawi, uh, uh, health, health facilities have, have so many departments. Uh, so which one is the key one and how do you motivate them to really you know, participate uh, virtual entry on the link, knowing that like in our setting, um, our health facilities are overwhelmed with uh, you know, the population. Thank you. Yeah, I think that may be a good question for Steve or, or Gift in Liberia. Um, yeah, I, I think my, my reaction to, uh, to Louis' question um, regarding uh, which department uh, do you place um, the, 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 the gadget? I think it all depends where you have the largest volume of people to assess, or it also depends on the strategy that you are going to use. Um, who is doing the actually, uh, who is facilitating the assessment? But I think in your case, uh, what you said, you said um, uh, you are actually using a PA uh, outreach worker. Uh, so possibly that PA outreach worker is going to uh, to take it around. But now, uh, when you are using it for peer outreach worker, the challenge will be it may not be applicable to other participants who are not peers to that particular person. So I think in that case, you really need to decide because some of the assessment you are going to do to the general clientele at the hospital um, uh, and um, maybe the peer outreach worker is not the best place to um, uh, to administer to everybody. So I think I think there are so many considerations for you uh, to think about uh, where to deploy the gadget and uh, uh, who does the assessment. Thanks, Gage. Uh, do you want to be more specific, like in your case in in Liberia, uh, where who do you give in the health facility, especially a small health center like setting? Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. So, 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 so in Liberia, what we have done is um, uh, right now um, the the tablet is actually uh, in the ART clinic. 
So um, uh, now the challenge, as I said, um, the challenge now is, um, you know, with the overwhelming um, uh, like number of patients and uh, the very same uh, staff that have to see uh, patients, uh, so many patients, and they have to do the assessment. And then you have the challenge now of uh, uh, like um, not so many assessments being done. Um, but uh, I think in your case, you can also borrow that idea uh, wherever you decide to place it, but then maybe having that person like kind of uh, a roving person who will be doing that assessment after each client has been seen and then uh, they go around to do the assessment, maybe uh, that might be um, another, another way of doing it to maximize the assessments. So in Cambodia, our tablets are also in the ART clinics and there are tablets for the clients and there are tablets for the staff. Um, and they are asked to fill out, the, the clients are asked to fill out the forms uh, or the survey when they're waiting. Um, and it, it happens at different points during their visit in the ART clinic. Um, there are facility-based workers in the clinics that are people living with HIV who are not actually clinic staff, but they are staff assistants. And they're the ones that are responsible for assisting clients in, in performing the survey. They do sit down with them if they are low literacy. Uh, we are switching, as I mentioned, to audio assist and using almost all emojis so that clients who are low literacy can listen and answer the questions by hitting on a smiley face. We're also going to be putting QR codes in the clinic so people that do have smartphones can scan the QR code and complete the survey with their own phone so they don't have to wait for the pad. Uh, those are innovations that we're going to be trying here as we roll this out to more sites. Over. Uh, uh, Steve, uh, how, ma how many tablets did you budget for health of prosperity? I'm just curious. You know. Uh, just two right now. Uh, we have two at the, each facility. Uh, that, that's all. And we only have eight facilities uh, right now, but we'll be expanding to 69 facilities. Um, and there'll be two tablets at each site. And the Global Fund is paying for those. Over. So, so after one has used the, the tablet, is there somebody who comes and sort of like sanitize the tablet, wipe it off, you know, in these COVID days before the next person uses it? That's right. Uh, they're just wiped in the clinic, exactly. Steve, it'd be really interesting to see how the implementation plan you've put together with the QR codes and the audio assist really pans out. I think there's a lot of lessons that we could learn from that, especially with our low literacy um, clients and trying to really empower them to provide their own input. But I wanted to ask another question, and maybe this is a question for Fon and any other participants who have routinely fed back the data. I was wondering, um, in particular, Fon, you talked about the quarterly meetings you have with staff. And one of the things we're struggling with in, Malau in Mali is really how do we use the data to inform quality improvement processes? So I wanted to ask you, have you seen changes as a result of those quarterly feedback sessions? Have you had an opportunity to go back and see if the clinics have actually used the data and has the service improved? Yeah, that's Shanti. Uh, from Thailand, we have uh, sent the feedback to the clinic supervisor. Um, yes, I'm, I go to the clinic and saw about the improvement. You know, about the, the feedback from client that share with us is not, not a big thing. Just have such as about uh, the client complain about uh, the reception called the name of the client in the hallways and they feel not comfortable and they complain in the link survey. After that, we send the feedback to the, the clinic supervisor and after that, they change uh, the method to call client. In the past, they called the name. After that, they called the number of client. Just as uh, number one, go to the counseling room, number one, something like that. So I thought it's not it's not a big change of the part of the clinic improvement, but I think that is a big thing for client because I did not saw about the negative feedback like this anymore after I go through the site and 
told them about the, the thing that client complains. And I think the client feel comfortable more when they go to the clinics and they can, they can confident and, and trust us more because in the, in the clinic in Thailand, we try to uh, create for the key population led right so um we will try everywhere everything to make sure our clinic just fairly from kp yeah can i add something from nepal yeah in nepal also uh, uh, we have seen some of the changes uh, uh, after receiving feedback from the link feedback tool so some of the changes are uh, were uh, as i already mentioned that uh, we uh, shifted uh, counseling room uh, receiving feedback from the beneficiaries and even another is uh, we prepare action plan based on the feedback received from the beneficiaries and uh, the, the, uh, those uh, feedbacks are uh, were, uh, are discussed during the, the weekly meetings and uh, they are emphasized uh, to the, to uh, to do those uh, just uh, for some of the things related to Key population friendly messages. So they, these things are reiterated uh, through di different forums. Uh, so th this has these these has been uh, really helpful to improve the uh, overall quality of services. So uh, just uh, sharing the uh, one data. Uh, uh, so data uh, suggests that uh, around uh, initially we had uh, around 41 percent of uh, clients were satisfied from the services, but later right now in last quarter there were almost 71% were satisfied from, satisfied from the services. Uh, that is clearly visualized uh, through the uh, data also. Yeah. That's really great to hear. Um, I wonder how, could you explain to me how you guys are collecting data? Because in Mali right now, what we've done is we have our m &E person who really looks at the data. And, and I think we're having some challenges there in sharing that data more broadly. And I'm wondering how you've actually set up the process within the program to look at the data routinely and then share it. And who, the, who has those responsibilities? Because maybe we can learn from you and um, improve the way we've been doing it. Um, from Thailand, I is have a manual strategy. It's not uh, as a, in the link so we then try to uh, put the dashboard, but uh, the dashboard see overall data, but we can analyze it. So I uh, Eric helped me to export file over over file of client to the Excel and I analyze manually. Yeah, in every quarter, just now. Yeah. But some some uh, some challenge that I have is is not about it. it's not a real time right because we have we don't have much more time to export every data every day to monitoring about this so that is a gap of Thailand yeah. So in Cambodia we work with the National HIV Center and all the data is uploaded directly from the pads the dashboards that are developed for each site and they're shared at the monthly meetings at each site uh, and the issues that come up dissatisfaction or, or issues that need to be attended to are then used by the sites to make improvements and, and it has made a difference in, in many other sites. Ours is not directed direct at KP specifically. We actually don't get much information to be able to disaggregate by KPs. We look at all of the PLHIV attending the, the clinics. Over. Yeah, in case of Nepal, so we, as Steve mentioned, we also uh, have a, a we also uh, analyze data and we uh, share dashboards of. Uh, each clinics and even each districts. And uh, another thing is that we receive some of the qualitative responses. Qualitative responses are very, uh, I think, um, uh, uh, I remember that qualitative responses are much more powerful and even uh, they are some, some of the, their, their reflections and their real feelings are uh, 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 real feelings are expressed in the qualitative responses. So, in, uh, real, while talking about the real-time response, we 
uh, we uh, check out these uh, uh, survey monkey on regular basis and we send uh, the, uh, the, this type of qualitative responses to our program officer directly and uh, so that they can have some level of discussion with uh, the implementing partner agencies and even and uh, they can uh, have some sessions at the uh, their clinics and uh, and within their staff and uh, uh, the, uh, recently we have received some of the feedbacks so um, uh, uh, based on those feedback we are planning to have a uh, key population friendly related orientation session again so uh, these sort of uh, informations are uh, helpful to uh, act uh, immediately yeah over Well, great, everyone. We have reached the end of, the, of that first period for this uh, item. And I'd like to thank everyone for their um, active participation in the fishbowl. And now I'd like to open up to the audience's questions. I've gone through and typed some responses. So, Fishies, if you can go ahead and open that Q&A feature and look at the uh, questions that are there. And just un keep yourself un un unmuted and let me know if there's anyone that you'd like to respond to. I think there's one question for Nepal that's pending. And I think there's a question from uh, Paul who asked, how is verification of client satisfaction data verified? Um, I think I can answer that by saying that we don't typically go through a process of verifying the standard client feedback, meaning the scores that are provided. And we just hope that there's no, uh, at, you know, there's no uh, incentive that's too strong for people to be feeling fake complaints or multiple complaints for the same service providing uh, they could be skewing results high or low for a particular facility. I think in most cases we try to be sure that the quality improvement that takes place is not necessarily punitive and it's always constructive um, so that there's uh, and that the rewards aren't so high that people will game the system and, and, and provide fake responses. So we don't really put you know, controls on how many surveys can be completed. Um, as you know, uh, one client can provide multiple feedbacks for one visit if they access many services in that visit. And they can repeat that survey um, as many times as they want based on their other visits. And I think uh, the question from Nepal has been addressed uh, in, in the typed response. Are there any other um, questions that the team on the call, the fishes, would like to address from the attendees. Yeah, so I know Ben, you already responded to this one, but, but one of the participants uh, asked uh, whether you can use an, uh, any other platform other than SurveyMonkey. Uh, I also want to say yes, you can. Uh, in Malawi, we did. There was a time where we had to migrate from SurveyMonkey to ODK sort of platform owner. Yeah, so the reason why we did that was partly because, uh, you know, sometimes SurveyMonkey, depending on your budget, you may have a limited number of people uh, getting access to the SurveyMonkey and then data access becomes an issue. Uh, the second reason is that in Malawi network coverage, especially in a very rural, rural areas, uh, was, is challenging. So sometimes going there with a live database or a live questionnaire uh, it may be difficult for uh, health providers to collect data. So what we did was we used the ODK because ODK has an offline feature. So we're able to collect data. So once we come back from outreach activities or outreach clinics, uh, the system was able to sync. But the challenge with that was that now bend <laughs> our technical advisor couldn't easily access uh, that kind of data. So we'll switch right back to SurveyMonkey. But yes, you can, you, can, you can use another platform as long as there's a way to share data efficiently in between. Thank you. Yeah, Louis, that's a really great um, question because we talk about SurveyMonkey a lot. We're not promoting SurveyMonkey uh, for those that are on a call. There's many platforms you can use, but we did find that some offer some benefits and some offer some, some, some drawbacks. As you can see, uh, many of the programs on the call are collecting feedback in, a, in some, a couple of ways. One, 
links sent directly to clients so they can open it up in their phone and provide feedback. Of course, it's only useful if clients have a smartphone um, and mobile data. Um, the other option is that it's offered from a facility-based tablet. So the tablet in the facility can be taken by the client and done themselves, or a provider can help them do it. That's more widely accessible, and it's done in the facility right after the service access. So it's really convenient for clients. Issue being that if a provider is actually moderating it and sitting there with them, to, as they complete the feedback, it can be quite biased responses. We've seen some pretty biased responses in Liberia, for instance, where all the feedback is basically the same for each client. So we're thinking that it isn't actually done by the client themselves. So there's some challenges with that approach. Um, but Survey SurveyMonkey particularly uh, has been useful because the system allows for facility-specific dashboards to be created and sent as a link to the facilities themselves. And survey analysis can be done on the back end quite easily. And it can be, I can show you in a moment, a screen share of how that's done on SurveyMonkey. Other platforms have those same functionalities. Um, some of the challenges with using some of the open source software are mainly like, for instance, ODK, is that ODK then needs to have the data sent to Excel to be analyzed or sent to another analysis software. And sometimes the learning curve of those new softwares is challenging. And when managing the same process in multiple countries of using the system, it's hard when they're using different, different systems to do a check-in and see on their response rate and the client complaints that have, if, if, if they've been addressed, et cetera. So we did this year move most countries over to SurveyMonkey, however, Cambodia I believe, Steve, you're using something like ODK or an offline version that can sync online. Is that correct? Yes, we're using ODK. You're using ODK. And then your analysis is, is sort of, you're porting the data that is, I think you also, you have a server locally where the data is stored and you have it ported over or accessed through Google Sheets where your analyses are done and then shared back with facilities. That's from my memory. I don't know if you've changed that process. That process is still the same. We may be switching to DHIS2 over time, but right now it's uh, it's still in ODK and Google. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, when programs have a strong IT team or those that have used ODK and data analysis from those functions and have the time to do analysis, custom analysis, the, the ODK is useful. Um, when programs have less capacity or time, uh, SurveyMonkey might be an easier option. The analysis functions are a little more user friendly. Any other questions in the in the chat that others would like to address? All right. Well, great. Um, there'll hopefully be some time for Q and A at the end. We are running a little bit over, so let's go ahead and continue. Uh, probably we'll go to the next slide. And we're just going to do a quick poll, uh, see where you guys are at in terms of your own implementation of a tool like this. So let's open up that poll and each of the participants can um, just respond by the stage of implementation where they're at uh, for client feedback systems. So you're not implementing and you're not considering as an option, or if right now you are considering to use in your own project or a project you support. Uh, you're planning, meaning you've already decided you want to do it and you're designing uh, for the rollout. Uh, and the last option is you already have a system, but it's paper-based or you have a system and it's electronic. Go ahead and select your response now and we'll see where everyone is at. All right, great. Um, make your selection and Pervy, why don't you go ahead and close the poll and reveal the responses. All right, great, thank you. Real responses. Okay, so it looks like most um, are using an existing paper-based system, um, and some already have an existing electronic system. So you can consider um, some of um, the lessons that we have for Link and see if you want to adapt some of the question types or data collection methods or or software use for data collection. It's this this webinar really is meant for um, just sharing experience um, from what we've done. Uh, through our, our uh, HIV program supported by FHI 360 for broader learning. 
So I hope that can be useful. And for those using a paper-based system, um, I think you'll learn about some of the benefits of an electronic system. And I can explain some of those right now because those aren't really spelled out in these slides. Um, the electronic system does allow for an HD program that moderates many clinics to be able to oversee the results, the feedback, and analyze more quickly, of course. Um, when you use a paper system, such as a uh, comment box in the clinic, it's hard for any third party to come in, collect those, and support a clinic on the quality improvement. Um, with the electronic system, it centralizes the data collection, filters it by facility, sends it back out, and sometimes that can be absolutely automated. So the facilities can see their you know, results live as they come in, but it still allows some central authority uh, to be able to uh, analyze results and provide that second voice to support the clinics for quality improvement. And of course, it automates the process of data collection to analysis, and uh, it opens up additional, more convenient options to provide feedback, such as sending a link to clients after they visit, um, using a tablet in the facility, uh, which sometimes can be easier to just click the options because most of it's multiple choice than to write uh, with a pen and paper in the facility. Um, and, and yeah, so those are some of the, the reasons why countries are moving to uh, this, this option of electronic client feedback. So we'll go to, we'll close this uh, poll results and we'll go to the next slide. So yes, I just want to thank all the fishes. Um, and you, of course you can remain in the chat and respond to clients, uh, clients, respond to our audience's questions and provide additional responses there. And I'm just going to go through some of the standard processes for rolling out adapting uh, link. So go to the next slide. We're going to start with our data collection methods. I've already listed these, so I'll go through these very quickly. They can be sent to a client on their phone. Some programs use an electronic client management system anyway, so they know when a client has access to service because it's been reported on that system. And that system can be programmed to send an SMS to the client with a link to, their, to that online survey. And we've done this with the online reservation and case management app, or also uh, called uh, one is called quick res quick res.org is an application of that nature and clients book appointments and at the end of the day of their appointment that link is sent to every client and even if they didn't show up they have the option to mention that they didn't show up and explain why and then rebook an appointment in thailand they have another uh, e-cascade uh, system with comcare technology that is linked to these sms that also go out next slide the survey can be advertised in a facility, uh, meaning a poster can be there with a QR code that says you can provide your feedback. Clients can scan a QR code and find the survey, open it up, and then take it when they leave the facility. Uh, the cons with this approach is that it might have a low response rate. You know, for instance, clients just might not see that, 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 that poster there unless providers mention it to every client, or they may not have a smartphone our mobile data that would enable them to actually scan the QR code and open that link. Next slide. Uh, something that we're doing a little more often is having a tablet at the service point so that providers can offer to every client at the end of their appointment or have a process for offering it to maybe 50% or one uh, or every other or every third client just so that there's a systematic approach to offering this. Uh, that meets their needs for the, their client flow. There's, of course, an issue with provider bias here, and it does depend on who's offering it and who might be facilitating or entering responses for clients on the tablets. Next slide. Something we've done in Malawi, and I believe in uh, Nepal as well, is community outreach workers can have a smartphone and they can be enabled to ask clients, hey, have you gone to the facility in the last week? Or would you like to provide feedback on your experience? Uh, and they can easily they can easily do that. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I think we might have lost uh, the the moderator. So I'm going to go ahead and share. Oh, she started with the sharing again. Great. So the other option is a callback phone survey. So when when providers or a case manager assigned to a client know that someone's attended the facility. They have a record of those that have attended and with their phone number and someone can call them up and offer the option to provide feedback by phone. So this is useful because it uh, can be done virtually and depends on who asks about the feedback, there can be less provider bias. 
and it facilitates more equitable access to providing feedback. Okay, so probably we're gonna go to the slide that says data analysis and use, so a couple slides forward. So how do programs use this data? We'll go to the next slide where uh, you see the data use process as a, as a diagram. Here we show uh, the data use process there. So there's two main processes. One is a more frequent check and review and response to any adverse events reported on the client complaint form. You see that in the set of red arrows. Uh, another monthly or quarterly review process is for client satisfaction feedback. And that's fed through a centralized person or team. So on, we had all the fishes on the call. Those are typically the people or someone else on their team is responsible to do that analysis. They do analysis and they share those analysis with the facility teams with, where the quality improvement actions can be identified and facility management can take ownership of the changes meant to improve the client experience. And this process repeats at regular intervals and the program would decide uh, that interval. I'll go to the next slide. So standard data use dashboard. So in SurveyMonkey, there's a couple options. There are things called analysis pages, which allows you to set, a, uh, to set several filters for your view, show certain kinds of data, and share that view with others, such as to a facility. Um, it does only allow uh, one set of filters to be applied, okay? The other is a dashboard. Dashboards allow multiple filters to be applied to the same view. And this is useful if you want to filter your, that question that asked about your uh, factor that impacted your score above. Maybe you want to filter that by the low scorers and the high scorers and see what is a contributing factor among the high scorers compared to the low scores. That's a useful question to actually bifurcate and the dashboards allow you to do that. So some of the analyses um, and dashboards that you would want to create to support quality improvement would be an aggregate analysis of all facilities. That's allowing you to know, you know your response rate across all facilities. Is implementation going well? You can do a facility comparison, and this allows you to compare that net promoter question response by facility. That's our main metric to compare client feedback across facilities and identify facilities that where you really need to focus your quality improvement. Then you can do a facility specific analysis, which is gonna allow you to see the volume of surveys completed at a particular facility and then identify the, um, the main contributing factors to low scores. And that can also be done on, on your facility specific dashboard. And as you use this monthly, you can take one dashboard that's for a facility or an analysis page, and you can set a time range to just be the last month. So then you can begin to use it specifically for the feedback received in a specific period and see if things have changed over time. And a last uh, data use uh, visualization can be just the individual client complaints. So this is not going to really aggregate their responses. Uh, it's gonna show individual client complaints that have been entered on that form so that each one can be viewed individually and used for uh, to you know, use by the team to respond to each one of those individually, whereas the others are, are typically done as an aggregate analysis. We'll go to the next slide. And this slide shows a recommended uh, process for data analysis and use. So we do, I mean, we would recommend a very regular, if not live, uh, review of any client complaints submitted because this could include experience of violence or other adverse events in the facility or even out the, outside of the facility uh, based on something that happened with their HIV service access. So for instance, it can be related to index testing. A provider supports the client to notify their partners about HIV testing and something in that interaction may have led the partner of the client uh, to know uh, of their HIV status uh, inadvertent disclosure and they could experience some kind of violence. And it might be by their partner, it might be in, outside of the facility. So it's very important that programs are able to review uh, the client complaints there uh, you know, rapidly at a, at a frequent interval. Our programs offer a emergency contact line at the end of the client feedback form for immediate support. And then they also have a weekly uh, event on their calendar to, to 
to, uh, to, to go in and look at any new client complaints and they send a small notice to HQ team saying no new complaints or two new complaints and they log it and they say if they've been responded to. So at a global level, we're able to ensure that client complaints are received, they are read within a week and they are responded to. Um, and, and that's done at the field level, but then reporting to, to HQ. Uh, and then in terms of client feedback, this is satisfaction feedback and open responses. They, it's typically done at the interval when the existing client, uh, when the existing facility level service quality process takes place. So for instance, if there's a quarterly meeting or a monthly meeting where the facility reviews their data uh, and the management decides on next steps, this client feedback should be included in that meeting. So it might be monthly, it might be quarterly. Um, and it, it really does depend on what they're already doing. And of course, uh, when programs do regular site visits, this data should also be brought there into that meeting when they have the site visit, discuss what changes have been implemented in the facility, uh, maybe a, a checklist to be sure that those changes have taken place. And that's another opportunity to use the data that has been analyzed for quality improvement. So we'll go to the next slide. And on this next slide, um, I'll be doing a screen share. I'll be doing a demo of the responses that you entered previously on the survey, just to uh, give you an example of how we do data analysis on, on SurveyMonkey. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And I'm sharing with you the view that we have within SurveyMonkey and uh, of your responses on that test survey. So as a, uh, as a program manager uh, reviewing this, what I would first do every week is I'd go to my view here that says complaints. And I've already set these up for us before we, we started this. So you can see here, I've added my filters, a filter for anyone that said, yes, I wanna submit a complaint. And I just, I filtered my view to only show the client complaint questions, okay? So then I have that there. And let's go to individual responses because this is something that we wanna do at an individual level not at an accurate level. And we're able immediately to look at here, the client feedback. So you see the, the negative uh, experiences here. I was prevented from accessing treatment or other services. I was asked sensitive information without my consent. Um, please tell us in detail about what happened. I'm too emotional, I can't, okay. So this is an example where uh, it's not exactly specific about what happened. There's a nurse at this facility, let's see, it's Dodo Community Clinic, where we have this information. So this is an example where we cannot follow up with the client because they do not provide any contact information to learn more about them, that, that's okay. But we can communicate this to the facility management and ensure that uh, they're aware that clients believe that they're being asked sensitive information without their consent and they're prevented from access and treatment. We don't have more information um, but we know that a nurse might have been you know, involved in this. So that's how that can be used. If a client does provide their contact information, it's very useful to contact the client, get more details, and then uh, respond to the facility. Um, so that would be done first. That would be done actually weekly. And each individual complaint you'd go through, and there's 11 here. So the, each one would we, be gone through, and you'd have to tick mark that you've responded to the client, responded to the facility, it's been addressed and you'd note whatever corrective action or quality improvement has taken place. So that, um, and, and if a client does experience any form of violence or adverse event, uh, this is a situation where you'd wanna have someone that is trained in first line support to be able to support those clients um, and help link them to available services. So now we'll go back for a normal process of quality of client feedback uh, use. So you'd start by looking at your question summaries, which is your summary aggregate analysis. And we're just gonna see where we get our feedback. So here, we have most of our feedback coming in for Alice Community Clinic. And let's go ahead and look at the actual number of responses. So 14, typically data analysis can really start at around 20. So we typically wait until a facility has 20 responses and then we do a facility specific analysis. I'm just gonna save this here. 
Uh, so what we can do now is we'll do an analysis of all facilities together because we have around 34 that have been done in total. And so my next uh, thing that I will compare is across facilities about their satisfaction. So here's our question. How likely is it that you would recommend this service to a friend or colleague? Orange are detractors, low scoring. Yellow are passive and green are promoters. So immediately you can see that we're having um, some, a pretty high rate of detractors across facilities, but particularly at Dodo and Mad Hatter. So these are situations where you first ask how many uh, negative responses are these? And you can see here that Dodo has three in total, all three are negative. That's enough to start quality feedback and to look and to see what's being said by clients. If it's just one, you might wait till you get more responses. And then you see here, uh, Mad Hatter has six responses, all are negative or passive. So this is an example where you'd really start looking at the, at the open response to see what's happening here. So this is how you can prioritize very quickly where you wanna focus your quality improvement efforts, given you might have limited time um, and resources to, to do the analysis and also the feedback to the facility. So the next step is you can, you can filter your view to only view the client feedback that were negative, so the detractors. So this is gonna give us a view of the services that we're looking at at all these facilities, okay, mostly to be testing. And here we have, what is the factor that most impacted their score? Again, this is only detractors. So we can see here that availability of services is the number one issue among detractors. And then staff friendliness is second. So of course, when you're doing this, you will wanna actually filter by facility because one facility might be availability of services and a different facility might be staff friendliness. So let's just assume this is one facility. It means you're gonna to wanna to look at the open responses to see if there's any examples given about availability of services or staff friendliness. So we can go down and you can go here. So this is gonna show you the open responses from those individuals. So they do talk about cleanliness, um, wait times. Um, uh, since here's a good example, be more sensitized about men who have sex with men and not assume all clients are heterosexual. So this is an example where you might say staff friendliness was an issue, particularly experienced by MSM and maybe needing some clinical skills around supporting MSM uh, in HP services. And here's an example, staff attitudes need to be improved. It's not very specific, uh, so it's not that useful, but here's something specific. Might also, uh, must also speak local languages. So um, supporting the facility to ensure that there are staff available that can speak the languages of the clients that they're serving. When responses that are this short are provided, they're not useful because they might've already said privacy in the, 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 the leading factor analysis up here. So then if they say privacy again, it's, it's not, nothing new. What we really are looking for in this, in this question here is a more detailed explanation about that leading factor so that you're, you as a program are able to know what is the root cause of that issue. Okay, here's an example that is actually very actionable. They want increased privacy, not having to undress in front of a physician. <laughs> when we all like that? All right, so these are some examples for quality improvement. And you can see here the, the breakdown by population as well. And the next you can go is to promoters. So this is where you would want to see people that had a great experience at the facilities, what was good, because these are very important to know uh, when you're supporting other facilities that are doing bad in that same area. You can pull examples from the high scoring facilities of what went well. So this is the same situation. You're gonna look by facility, you're gonna see the leading factor leading to their high scores. It's confidentiality listed and staff knowledge and skills, okay? So let's go down and see exactly here we have. Let's, we're gonna actually have to change this view so that we can see, as you can see here, it's not showing the correct question here. So we wanna be sure that we can see this question Seems you're happy with the services, explain one thing you like most. Okay, here. 
So most of these are, so here's a useful one. They like the same day initiation, okay? That's useful. Um, patient staff, that's useful when other providers are being ranked lower uh, because of staff friendliness or other issues. You can see that this facility was ranked higher because pay, the staff were patient and really listened to clients. Those are some things that you can use for quality improvement. Okay, so I'll go ahead and, and stop my screen share. I just wanted to, to review with you how you can quickly go through and filter. You can add filters here by question and answer. Then you can select you know, your individual facility and you can get responses filtered that way. All right, I'm gonna stop my screen share. Pervy, you can take over the screen share again. And we're gonna to go to, we're gonna finish up our slides uh, very shortly by just going over how these things are rolled out. So we'll go to the rollout section. So rollout can be done quite quickly. Your adaptation, testing, setup of uh, data systems can be done within three months. Uh, typically, you'll do a situational assessment of existing community monitoring feedback systems. Uh, you'll look at the link plan and tools and adapt it to your context or integrate those best practices or questions into your existing tools. And you can engage your stakeholders to gain a consensus on, on this plan and revise as necessary. And you can establish a committee for, for your link stakeholders, such as uh, community partners that want to be involved in reviewing the client feedback and using it for advocacy purposes and also supporting data collection. So having all those people in maybe a WhatsApp group to support implementation might be a good idea. Then you'll procure your devices and technology. Um, a standard recommendation is to have a tablet. Uh, if it's done at a facility or a smartphone can be done. If it's by an outreach worker in the field, it's easier to carry. Make sure that those tablets have a SIM card so that they can connect to mobile data when a facility is out of, out of electricity or doesn't have Wi-Fi, or if it's being used in the field, those are some important things to uh, remember. And, and then you'll, you'll uh, you know, launch your link tool. For instance, in SurveyMonkey, it's just accessed as a link that you can save as a shortcut on the home screen of your device, or it can be a actual application you download and have available on the device such as ODK, or the offline version of SurveyMonkey, which is also available. And then you'll pretest the survey with your audiences and revise as necessary, keeping in mind um, some revisions may um, counteract the standardized nature of the survey and might not go with the logic of how it's been presented before. So just making sure stakeholders understand that logic of how that tool is structured and train your staff and users on how to use the systems and analyze data as we've done today. You can start your routine data collection, identify issues in your data collection, quality of implementation, and support improvements over time. And then you'll analyze and user link data at routine frequencies and respond to adverse events sort of immediately or at least at a weekly interval. We'll go to the next slide. These are some requirements for rollout. Uh, you can uh, review these here. Have an appropriate budget for the devices you need. Uh, it may be very expensive if you have 100 facilities and you want a tablet at each facility, of course. That's just something to keep in mind. And you may supplement your data collection in different ways to optimize your budget, such as sending directly to clients, having a post from the facility that they can take a picture of and, and do on their own, um, or having those tablets in the facility or in the community level. Um, and of course, uh, having the staff available on your team to, uh, and the capacity and the time available to look at the data, respond, and analyze the data quarterly or monthly for quality improvement at the facility level. And of course, one very important aspect is ensuring that whoever is moderating the system uh, for link or electronic client feedback, that they really have the mandate to support facilities and quality improvement because it becomes very awkward when there is client feedback, but the HD program doesn't really have that strong connection to either the ministry or the facility uh, management to present this data and support them with quality improvement. If they don't have that mandate, then it's awkward to actually be collecting the data in the first place. So ensure that that's there and the relationships are in place to be able to facilitate quality improvements uh, once the data is collected. 
All right, we'll go to the next slide. And uh, we are at the end of the 90 minute mark, but I will say, uh, please submit your questions in the Q&A now, and we will respond uh, by email uh, with a documentation of each of your questions and the responses. Uh, so I wanna thank everyone so much for your time. We'll go to the next slide, Pervy. And please do reach out to us if you have any questions. Uh, this is our team that are supporting link implementation across different countries. Uh, going online at FHI360.org can be used to request support tools or assistance, and you can click to join that WhatsApp group chat. Uh, that's where all of our programs are uh, on, as well as other non-FHI360 programs when they ask questions about online HIV outreach service delivery and also this client feedback system. All right, thank you everyone for your time. And I really hope this has been a useful webinar for you when you're considering setting up or using electronic client feedback systems. This is based on our experience at FHI 360. There are many others in this field that have used similar or uh, different kinds of these same systems. And we'll be happy to hear from you if you have any advice or feedback for us. Thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.